it's possible that your ancestors left Africa far earlier than we realize. The conventional narrative of how humans departed Africa is being called into question, as more fossil remains from China and Southeast Asia are discovered. According to the generally accepted theory, Homo sapiens began their evolutionary journey in Africa 200,000 years ago, and remained there until 60,000 years ago, when they departed via the Middle East and spread around the globe. Hence, despite the fact that the more ape-like Homo erectus traveled all the way to Indonesia and is thought to have given origin to the Neanderthals, and the Denisovans, all of these lineages finally disappeared. Only in Africa has our species been able to evolve, apparently. Dead ends are any older hominin bones discovered outside of Africa. This is supported by genetic data, as well as bone dating to specific time periods. The genetic variety of native people decreases as one travels farther from Africa, through Asia, and finally, across the Americas. This suggests that the original population originated in Africa and slowly lost diversity as it spread. According to genetic theory, this genetic bottleneck occurred 60,000 years ago. In fact, the prevalent theory is that humans first left Africa 60,000 years ago. But when old bones are found in the East, the conventional wisdom is gradually being called into question. Indeed, evidence is mounting that human history may have been far more sinister and complicated than previously assumed. Chinese archaeologists have discovered modern human teeth that are at least 80,000 years old. Anthropologist Chris Stringer, an expert on human origins at the British Museum, calls the finding game-changing. At least 20,000 years before modern humans were considered to have arrived in southern Asia, researchers have dated 47 human teeth discovered in a cave in China to between 80,000 and 120,000 years ago. The discovery, which was reported in the journal Nature, may lead researchers to re-evaluate their beliefs of how Homo sapiens left Africa and traveled throughout the world. In the discussion over the migration of modern humans across southern Asia, this paper represents a game-changer. If you accept the out-of-Africa theory, the ultimate origin would still be Africa, but attention will now be directed on areas like Arabia and India as potentially significant stopovers on the pre-80,000 year old expedition to southern China. This most recent find appears to be more reliable. The size and form of the teeth from the Chinese cave appears unmistakably modern and they appear to be accurately dated by uranium thorium techniques to at least 80,000 years ago. The teeth were discovered by an international team of scientists in a layer of sandy clay that was 20 to 50 centimeters thick, and covered in a thin coating of rock with a small stalagmite growing on top. The stalagmite's dating provided a minimum age of 80,000 years for the human teeth buried below, with an upper limit of around 120,000 years determined by an examination of animal fossils discovered near the teeth. Large samples of dental remains from early humans, including Neanderthals, were compared to the teeth, and it was discovered that they consistently matched the characteristics of samples of Homo sapiens from the past 100,000 years. In fact, the researchers came to the conclusion that the teeth were far more similar to later European and even modern humans, and were generally smaller than other contemporaneous specimens from Asia and Africa. The researchers claim that this finding could end the quarantine that has limited theories regarding the origin of Homo sapiens in Asia to the past 40,000 to 50,000 years. If the research is accurate, our species may have successfully colonized huge portions of Asia 35,000 to 75,000 years before it did in Europe. According to some anthropologists, one of two opposing hypotheses may contribute to the explanation of how Homo sapiens moved from Africa into Asia earlier than previously believed. The first concerns what has been referred to as a failed dispersal that occurred in what is now Northeast Africa and the Levant, a region of the eastern Mediterranean, between 100,000 and 120,000 years ago. Some people believe that the fossils from two locations in modern-day Israel, Kafzeh and School Caves, are towards the conclusion of this previous attempted migration. The early dispersal of modern humans from Africa into the Levant, as seen in the fossils from Skull and Kafzeh around 120,000 years ago, has been characterized by several experts as a failure that only reached Israel or a small portion of the Levant. One possibility is that there was a successful distribution along these lines, and that once the populations reached Asia, they quickly advanced to the modern human stage visible in the teeth. The third possibility is that the fossils show a previously unknown, early, 
and distinct spread of more contemporary-looking people. According to this hypothesis, some populations of Homo sapiens traveled to Asia by a separate, possibly more southerly route that may have included southern Arabia and India. The authors of the study note that several of the current human characteristics of the teeth are absent from fossils discovered in more northern latitudes. This data may support many origins or dissemination paths for modern people throughout Asia. Although the fossils from Asia resemble Homo sapiens, another species may have simultaneously evolved these traits, according to John Hawkes of the University of Wisconsin. He questions if a single, rapid migration occurred 60,000 years ago. In point of fact, a detailed examination of the DNA reveals evidence of an earlier migration. The traditional out of Africa at 60,000 years ago account was recently tested against the earlier exodus theory. They integrated Southeast Asian indigenous people genomes into a migratory model. Scientists discovered that an early exodus around 130,000 years ago, and traveled over a coastal path across the Arabian Peninsula, India, and Australia, followed by a second wave along the traditional route, best fit the genetic data. Most people move about, yet the Australian Aborigines have remained in the same place for at least 50,000 years. Study of hair suggests each tribe remains constantly present in its same locations of Australia, since their arrival 50,000 years ago. The Aborigines have now been proven to have been around for approximately 60,000 years. If their rock art dates back to their original arrival, it would be the world's oldest. Although being halfway around the world from our subspecies birthplace, Australia is home to some of the first undisputed traces of modern humans outside of Africa and Australian Aborigines have distinct languages and cultural adaptations. Some researchers believe that the Aborigines' ancestors were the first modern people to leave Africa, traveling rapidly eastward along the beaches of southern Asia thousands of years before a second wave of migrants inhabited Eurasia. According to a trio of genomic research, the first to evaluate several whole genomes from Australia and New Guinea, this is not the case. They conclude that Aborigines, like most other contemporary Eurasians, are descended from a single population of modern people who surged out of Africa 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, and scattered in many directions. According to population geneticist Joshua Aiki, the studies are extremely important because they provide compelling evidence that the vast majority of non-Africans alive today trace their ancestry back to a single out-of-Africa event. Yet, the case is not closed. According to one study, a previous wave of modern humans left evidence in the genomes of living people in Papua New Guinea. Archaeologists have long debated for an early expansion out of Africa, and both sides may be correct. We're approaching a paradigm in which later dispersals outnumber early ones. Several academics offered the contentious theory that an early wave of modern humans departed Africa more than 60,000 years ago, via a path known as the coastal or southern route. These people would have started their journey in Ethiopia, crossed the Red Sea at its narrowest point to the Arabian Peninsula, and then pushed east along the South Asian coastline all the way to Australia. Other genetic investigations, many on living people's mitochondrial DNA, reinforced this notion by revealing a relatively early break between Aborigines and other non-Africans. Nevertheless, for many significant portions of the world, study of entire genomes, the gold standard for population studies, was limited. Hundreds of fully sequenced genomes from Africa, Australia, and Papua New Guinea were added to existing databases by three big groups of geneticists working independently to fill the gaps. Each team interpreted the population history behind the patterns of similarity and difference in the genomes using complicated computer models and statistical studies. In a key publication outlining Australia's colonization, a team led by evolutionary geneticists focused on Australia and New Guinea. They infer that Aborigines diverged from Eurasians between 50,000 and 70,000 years ago, after the entire group had already split from Africans, by comparing Aboriginal genomes to other populations. That suggests that Aborigines and all other non-African people are descended from the same out-of-Africa sweep and that Australia was settled just once, rather than twice as some previous evidence suggested. Patterns in Aboriginal DNA suggest a genetic bottleneck around 50,000 years ago, as well as the enduring imprint of the small population who first populated the ancient continent. Another report, after examining 300 genomes from 142 populations, comes to a similar result. 
the take-home lesson is that modern humans outside of Africa are almost entirely descended from a single founding group. The third paper, however, makes a different claim. The study finds that at least 2% of the genomes of individuals from Papua New Guinea come from an early migration of modern humans, which departed Africa perhaps 120,000 years ago. After analyzing 379 additional genomes from 125 populations worldwide, According to their report, Homo sapiens departed Africa in at least two waves. Rising seas finally separated these humans from an ancient supercontinent, dividing Australia and Papua New Guinea. While they were genetically isolated from the rest of the world, their culture was strong and vigorous enough for them to develop new languages and traditions as they moved throughout the continent. Interestingly, 120,000 years ago is the same time the southern African Bushmen split from other human groups, so if this is true it means that people migrated from southern Africa to Australia without leaving any traces in between. Another option is that this group originated somewhere in the middle, such as India, and then migrated to Australia and Africa. In reality, studies cannot rule out a 1% or 2% contribution from an earlier Homo sapiens migration. As population geneticists, we could spend the next decade arguing about that 2%, but in practical terms it doesn't matter, says geneticist Joshua Aiki, adding that the most recent migration explains more than 90% of the ancestry of living people. Professor Aiki recently was shocked to discover Africans had significant Neanderthal DNA, about 1%, compared to the 3% found in most Eurasians. This amount is significant and cannot be easily explained, since Neanderthals never lived in Africa. Early humans would have encountered a smorgasbord of other nomadic hominin species on their way to Australia, including a Denisovan human relative, who has recently been found to have contributed about 4% of the indigenous Australian DNA. Scientists previously determined that prehistoric couplings resulted in all non-Africans today bearing up to 6% Neanderthal DNA, while Africans have around 1% Neanderthal DNA. The findings bolstered the case that Neanderthals and other now extinct hominins, long characterized as low browed, knuckle dragging prehistoric barbarians, were, in fact, not all that different from our own predecessors. A fourth research contends that changes in climate and sea level would have promoted earlier migrations. The astronomical cycles that caused the ice ages were used to rebuild conditions in northeastern Africa and the Middle East. They discover that a wetter climate and lower sea levels may have persuaded humans to move from Africa into the Arabian Peninsula and the Middle East at four different times, about 100,000, 80,000, 55,000 and 37,000 years ago. Early stone tool findings in India and Arabia demonstrate that modern humans indeed spread out during the early migratory periods. Nonetheless, those lineages have mostly died off. The Great Migration, which included more individuals and extended all the way to Australia, occurred later. About 60,000 years ago, something happens, with greater waves of modern humans spreading across Eurasia. That is something that all three publications agree on. Thus, the investigations demonstrate Aborigines' links to other Eurasians while also emphasizing Australia's early settlement and long isolation. As a result, they reinforce its singular place in human history. Except for Africa, the continent has deeper genetic divisions and roots that we see in a place else. What's more, the emergence of modern human behaviors around 100,000 years ago, as shown by drawings on cave walls and more complex tools, did not appear to be accompanied by any significant genetic alterations. Your genome contains information about every ancestor you've ever had. The study also reveals that the Kosan, aka African Bushmen, and Mbuti, aka Central African Pygmies, groups separated from other early humans earlier than 100,000 years ago, implying that there was no basic biological shift that triggered human culture. There is no indication of a magical mutation that created modern humans. It either means that the behaviors were developed earlier, they developed these behaviors independently, they acquired them through exchanges of ideas with other groups, or the estimated split times are too old. There was a movement of individuals spreading throughout the continent, leaving their signatures. It's a very small genetic signature. It's almost as if two men walk into a village and tell the villagers they have to speak a new language and use another stone tool, and then have a little sex before leaving. This tale has been lost in science for a long time. We now know that these ancestors were the first true human explorers. 
Our forefathers were terrified and excited of this unknown world, as they embarked on this extraordinary voyage across Asia and across the sea.